So hello and welcome to Platform SH. This video is going to be a quick walkthrough of how you configure your project to run on Platform SH. So what we're going to cover in this video is the concept of specifying your project's infrastructure as code. We're going to quickly introduce the YAML file format and show you how to use it to configure a basic project on Platform SH, as well as show you some more intermediate configuration you're going to be putting to use on your project. Finally, we'll get into a little bit of what this means for you as a developer. So infrastructure as code is a hot topic in DevOps right now. It's basically the idea of documenting exactly what your project needs in the form of hardware and software to function. If you ever used or heard of Puppet or Ansible or Terraform or AWS's cloud formation, these are all tools for specifying your project's infrastructure and code. This results in completely disposable and repeatable builds of your entire infrastructure. If this kind of thing is interesting to you, I highly suggest searching the web for the term pets versus cattle. But the point right now is that Platform SH has been using this approach since the beginning. Lots of other vendors will structure their offering around a certain framework like Drupal or WordPress. This makes it a little bit easier for them to coerce you into a certain way of structuring your project so that it'll fit into their offering. We don't do that. We do offer starter setups based around certain frameworks, but we don't really care how you structure your code base. As long as it can be expressed in our config format, you're free to build however you see fit. The end results are twofold. You get an amount of flexibility that other hosting vendors just can't match in terms of how you build your project, and you also get the freedom to use a variety of different tools to do the job. For instance, if you have a project that would be better served by a little Laravel app than bringing up an entire Drupal site, that's no problem on Platform SH. You'll be interacting with the same familiar interface and tool set that you're already used to. So YAML. YAML is not a programming language. It's what's known as a data serialization format, not unlike JSON or XML. That means it's a format that's meant to be readable by computers for the purpose of passing data around. It's a bit more human readable than JSON or XML though, which makes it perfect for config files. The basic format is just key and value, where the value can be a string or an integer, or lists of strings or integers, or more complex data structures, which I'll show you right now. So what I have here is just a very simple static HTML site, and I'm gonna bring your attention to three different config files. So the first two are in this .platform directory, which lives in the root of your project. These are project-wide settings. So the very first one I'm gonna show you is routes.yaml. This represents just web server configuration. And really all this does is take domain level requests that come in and point them to the app where they need to go. So you can see this super common pattern like we've got here. If something comes in on the bare domain, like example.com redirected to www.example.com. If something comes in on www.example.com, point it to this upstream, which is an application. The next file I wanna show you is services.yaml. This is where you put third-party services like MySQL or Solar or any of these other external software systems that your code base needs to interact with in order to do its job. So you can see the basic format here is just name the service and tell it what type it is and tell it how much disk space it needs. This particular one is a MariaDB that's version 10.0. Uh, if you need to add a Solar service to your project, it's as simple as specifying it in this file right here. So that brings me to platform.app.yaml. This is essentially your application's configuration. So you can see it just has a name here. This corresponds to the routes.yaml. This is sort of a hint that you can put multiple applications within a project and route to them independently. So, so the name of this app is app. The type of it is a PHP app running PHP 5.6. This build flavor composer says if there's a composer.json or composer.lock file, find it. Build the vendor directory out of what you find in there. And the disk is just how many megabytes of writable disk space is your application gonna to need to run. This web block here is more web server configuration at the application level. So this is, now that requests have been routed to this application at this domain, what do we do with them now? And this is as simple as it gets. This just says, anything that comes in, look in the public directory, this is our web root or our doc root, and if the file doesn't exist there, then pass it through to index.php. This would be our, our application's front controller, for example. So we want to allow requests here. There's a lot of other configuration that can go into this particular block here that you can find on our documentation site that I'll add into the notes below. So this relationships section here can be thought of as essentially services. So this is how you do the routing between what you have set up in your services.yaml file and your application. So if you need to make a database available, this one that you've named MySQLDB here, 
this is how the plumbing, this is how the network plumbing gets done between the two of these. So if you wanted to do something, you wanted to add that solar, you would say solar search here, and this is going to have a URL scheme of solar, and it's going to have a name of solar within your application. Simple as that. The mounts directive is writable disk space because, of course, your application is going to need to write logs most likely. It's going to have some user uploaded files that you might need to make it work. And so this is where you specify which directories in your application need to be writable and where they're going to end up being written to in your application container. Hooks warrant their own video, uh, but these are essentially shell commands that you can run at various points in the build and deploy lifecycle. And we'll get to that in a future video. Okay, so how about a quick demonstration? Why don't we upgrade our application from PHP 5.6 to PHP 7.0? So we're gonna get check out a new branch. We're gonna call this one PHP Upgrade. And we're gonna upgrade from PHP 5.6 to PHP 7.0. So we're gonna say git add everything here. We're gonna git commit, upgrade PHP version. And we're going to git push origin PHP upgrade. Okay, so I'm here in my projects admin. I need to activate this environment. So we will activate. This will just take a moment to redeploy. Okay, so this is all done building. Let's check it out. We're going to go to our PHP info page. And sure enough, this is running PHP 7.0. Just for the sanity check, we're going to check out our info.php on our dev environment, which is the parent branch of this particular change. So you can see this is quite something. We have just upgraded our entire project painlessly and safely in an entirely different branch from PHP 5.6 to PHP 7.0. So Provided QA has given the go-ahead on this. We're going to go ahead and merge this into dev. And it's that simple to upgrade your project from PHP 5.6 to PHP 7.0. Congratulations, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.